In this video, we're going to talk about fractions. So then we're going to talk about section 1.3, which is all about fractions. All right. Before we get to fractions, I want to talk about what we call the factors of a number. All right. Basically, a factor of a number is a number that divides evenly into another number or a given number. And what we're going to want to do is find a factor set, meaning we want to find all the numbers, all of the natural numbers that goes evenly into that number. All right. For instance, if we look at this example here, it says find the factors of 36. Well, in order for me to find the factors of 36, I've got to go through all of my natural numbers and see which numbers actually go evenly into 36. All right. I'm going to start with the easiest one, which is one. Right. And one way to kind of speed up this process instead of just going through one and just dividing it, I'm going to see what I multiply by one to get 36. And of course, I multiply one by 36 to get 36. And that way I have two factors of 36 instead of just a one. All right. Now I'm going to go to my next natural number, which is two. I can multiply two by 18 and that'll give me 36. So two and 18 are factors. Let's go to three. If I multiply 3 and 12, I'll get 36. So 3 and 12 are factors. Same thing holds for 4 and 9. If I try to go to 5, I can't think of a number that goes evenly or that I multiply that'll give me 36 if I multiply it by 5. So I'm going to skip over 5 and I'm going to go to 6. And I know that 6 times 6 will give me 36. Notice that 6 is on both of those lists. So um, that means that 7 and 8, and I already have 9 there. So those other numbers will not be factors of 36, all right? And so once I know all the factors of 36, I can write it as a solution set or a factor set, which I have uh, put in parentheses here. And it just means use your squiggly brackets and list those numbers that go evenly into 36. And that's what I'm calling my factor set. Notice here, I don't have to write the six twice. It's already in my factor set. So no need to repeat that number. All right, so my factor set for 36 is 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 9, 12, 18, and 36. All right, now we're going to talk about prime numbers. And prime numbers are kind of important. They're going to be important when we start to talk about simplifying what we call fractions. And basically, a prime number is a number that is larger than 1. And the thing that makes it prime, besides it being larger than 1, is that its only factors are 1 in itself. All right. And so this is what we're calling prime numbers. And so I have two examples here. I have 29 and 27. I want to determine if these numbers are prime numbers. And so if I think about 29, right, all I have to do is find one number besides 1 and 29 that goes evenly into 29. And that will prove to me that this is not a prime number, all right? So if I think about one number besides 1 and 29 that goes evenly into 29, I can't actually find that number. And so that must mean that 29 is prime, and so we'll have prime here, all right? So the only factors of 29 are 1 and 29. I'm going to go to 27. Again, I'm going to try to see if I can find at least one number that goes evenly into 27. And I've already got at least two in my mind, 3 and 9, all right? Two. 3 and 9 are not the same as 1 and 27, right? And so that means that this 27 is not prime. Anytime a number is not prime, we call it a composite number. We call it a composite number. So composite numbers are numbers that are not prime, all right? So for one, we know how to find the factors of a number, and now we know the definition of prime numbers. And so what I want to do is I want to list a couple of prime numbers because they're going to be valuable for what we're about to do. All right, my smallest prime number is 2, followed by 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, 19, 23, 29, 31, and there are plenty more prime numbers that are larger than 31. But for what we're going to be doing in our Math 101 class, I think these are a good list of uh, prime numbers for you to know. All right, because they may show up in some of the examples that we're going to be doing in the future. 
One of the main uses of prime numbers is finding the prime factorization of numbers, all right? And the prime factorization of numbers is basically rewriting a number as a product of its prime factors. And remember, product in math always means a multiplication, all right? So I want to be able to write a number like 84, which we see in this example here, as a product of just prime numbers, all right? And what we're going to do to do that, or what we're going to use to do that, is what we call a factor tree. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to demonstrate how we use the factor tree and our knowledge of prime numbers to rewrite 84 in its prime factorization form, all right? When I say a factor tree, I'm thinking of something similar to kind of like a family tree, all right? 84 is going to go on the top. And I'm going to have two branches under 84. And just to remind myself of those first few prime numbers, I'm going to write them off to the side here. 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, so on and so forth, right? And so what I'm going to do when I, when I go through the process of doing a prime factorization is I'm going to look at the smallest prime number that goes evenly into 84, all right? 84 is a pretty big number. But one thing I know about 84 is that it's even. That means that 2 goes evenly into 84. So 84 can be written as 2 times 42. Now, if you notice here, 2 is a prime number. Anytime a prime number shows up in my factor tree, I don't want to draw any branches under that. But when I have a composite number, I'm always going to draw a, uh, some branches under it. So 42 gets some branches under it. And so I'm going to, what I'm going to do now is start the process over, but 42 is going to be my new number. All right, 42 is even, all right? That means that 2 goes evenly into it, and so I multiply 2 by 21, and that'll give me 42. All right, once again, 2 is prime, so it won't have any branches under it, but 21 is not prime, it is composite, so I'm going to draw branches under it. And now I start the process over again. Notice here that 21 is not even, so 2 does not go into 21, so I've got to go to my next prime number, which is 3. And 3 definitely does go into 21 because I can multiply 3 by 7 and that will give me 21. If you notice here, 3 and 7 are both prime numbers. And so I can't continue anymore. That means I'm done with my factor tree. All right. And so if I look at the prime numbers that are a part of my factor tree, here I have them here, 2, 2, 3, and 7. Those numbers will allow me to write 84 as a product of, five, of, of prime numbers. It'll be a 2 here, a 2 here, a 3 here, and a 7 here, right? So 84 is the same thing as 2 times 2 times 3 times 7, right? So if I were to multiply 2 times 2, that'll be 4. Multiply that by 3, that'll be 12. And multiply that by 7, that'll give me 84, okay? And so that is how you find the prime factorization of numbers. All right, we're going to use the prime factorization in just a second. But what I want to do now is get into what a fraction is. All right, one simple definition of a fraction is basically numbers written as a division of two integers. All right, and when they, we write them as division, we represent the division with this horizontal bar here that represents the division. All right, and the number that we see on top is called our numerator. And the number that we see on the bottom is what we call our denominator. And one way that I remember that is that denominator starts with D and it is down under, right? And so numerators on top and denominators on the bottom. Now, one of the reasons why we have fractions in the first place is because, all right, if you think about our number line that we've developed from before, notice how our increments are given to us kind of like in holes, right? So our, we have our natural numbers, our whole numbers, our integers. Those were all whole numbers, right? They were perfect whole quantities, right? Well, there's actually numbers in between all of these whole numbers. And they, that's where our irrational numbers and our rational numbers start to fill in our number line, all right? And so when we have numerators divided by denominators, um, what a lot of people like to say is that your numerator represents your parts and your denominator represents your holes, all right? Part over holes, right? And so uh, uh, an example of a fraction is something like 2 over 5, right? I have two parts out of 5. And so if I think about my number line, if I have two parts out of 5, I don't get a hole, so I'm not able to go ahead and get all the way to 1 
I have to stop in between here on my number line. And so that's sort of the one of the reasons why we have fractions, right? Fractions and decimals, same thing, right? And so what we're going to do is we want to be able to work with these things, understand what they mean, and as well as being able to add, subtract, multiply, and divide them. Today, we're just going to touch the surface. What I want to do now is to simplify fractions, all right? I just wrote the fraction 2 fifths, all right? This fraction could have been written as 4 over 10, okay? All right, now 4 tenths is not simplified. We can actually reduce it to 2 fifths, and I'm going to show you how you, one way that you can reduce it. All right, one way that you can reduce it is by finding the prime factorization of the numerator and the denominator, right? So that prime factorization stuff that we just went over, find the prime factorization of the number on top, prime factorization of the number on the bottom, and then rewrite write those numbers in their prime factorization and then cancel your common factors. And what I mean by cancel your common factors, let's say we have a 2 in our numerator and a 2 in our denominator, all right? Well, 2 divided by 2 right that is one from our from our division right because one times two will give you that two up there right and so instead of just keeping the extra stuff in into our problems we normally just cancel those out and they're just one all right and so what i'm going to do is i'm going to use the example of 72 over 90 to help us um see how we can use prime factorization to cancel uh, so that we can simplify fractions I'm going to start with 72. Again, we're going to use our prime factorization, so we're going to use our factor tree. 72 can be written as 2 times 36. Notice 36 is composite because it's 2 times 18. 18 is composite. It's 2 times 9. And 9 is composite. It can be written as 3 times 3. And so 72, I'm going to write our long fraction here, is 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 3. Now I'm going to go to 90, okay? 90 can be written as 2 times 45. Notice here 45 is not, it's not prime, it is composite, so I'm going to continue. The next largest prime number that goes into 45 is 3. It can be written as 3 times 15. And 15 can be written as 3 times 5. And so I can rewrite 90 as 2 times 3 times 3 times 5, right? And so now what I see here is my prime factorizations of both of those numbers. And now what I'm going to do is cancel any of my common factors. And what I mean by common is com numbers that are common to the numerator and the denominator. For instance, I have a 2 here and a 2 here. I can cancel them. They're 1, right? Um, I can't cancel this 2 with anything because I only have 1, 2 in the denominator. I can't cancel this. But I can cancel the 3 and the 3 here, right? There are 1 when I cancel them. And I can cancel the 3s here. There are 1. And so what I really have in, in my problem here, um, if you want to think about it, is I have a 1 times 2 times 2 times 1 times 1. Well, 1 times anything is 1. So the 1s don't really matter, right? We have a 2 times 2, which is 4, with the extra little loop here, right? And in my denominator, I'm going to be left with a 5, all right? And so we got a 4 over 5, all right? That is this fraction in simplest form. Notice 4 and 5 don't share any common factors, all right? Now, at the beginning of this video, we, we started talking about factor sets, all right? And I, what I want you to look or notice here is that we canceled a 2, a 3, and a 3 here, right? 2 times 3 times 3. That is 18, all right? Notice here, 2 times 3 times 3 is 18. And so 18 is the largest factor that 72 and 90 have in common, right? And so what a lot of other people like to do are besides using the prime factorization method to cancel, is to say, okay, well, if I take 72 and 90, right? Well, what I can do is I can divide them by that greatest common factor, which is 18, right? If I divide 72 by 18, I get 4. And if I divide 90 by 18, I get 5. And so instead of going through the process of doing the prime factorization, what a lot of people like to do is just to kind of cancel, kind of in their heads, right? You could do the same thing with, let's say, 
both of these are divisible by nine, right? Nine goes into 72. And, you know, when, once you get to middle school, high school, you start to get creative with your counseling here. Nine goes into 72 eight times. So we can put an eight there. And nine goes into 90 10 times, right? And so this is going to be the same thing as 8 over 10. Well, if you look at 8 over 10, that's not simplified completely. They both have a common factor of 2. So 2 goes into 8 four times, and it goes into 10 five times. And so, again, we get 4 over 5. One of the reasons why I want to go over the prime factorization method is so that it'll be used when you have numbers that are really, really big, all right, that you can't less necessarily see in 18 or in or nine that goes evenly into it, all right? And so this method is useful. If you know other methods of simplifying, that is perfectly fine, all right? I want to talk about the types of fractions that we can have, all right? <clears throat> there are two types. We have proper fractions. Proper fractions, our numerator is smaller than our denominator, all right? For instance, when I look at two-fifths, notice two is less than five. I'm going to call that a proper fraction. All right, my part is smaller than my whole, and so it kind of makes sense. When I look at the other type of fractions, which are improper fractions, it's the other way around. My numerator is greater than or equal to my denominator, for instance, if I have 5 over 2. So I have 5 parts and 2 holes, and so it doesn't, <clears throat> it makes sense because I know how many holes and I know how many parts, but I don't necessarily need to write it this way, all right? Improper fractions can always be written as what we call mixed numbers. And what I want to do now is go over what mixed numbers are and how we can go from having an improper fraction and changing it to a mixed number and vice versa. All right. A mixed number is basically a sum of a whole number and an improper fraction. Right. So if I look at, let's say, 2 plus 1 half. All right, this is a sum of a whole number, which is two, and a fraction, a proper fraction, which is one half, right? But normally when we write this, we don't put the plus sign by it. We just do two and a half, all right? And so what I'm going to go through the process of is I want to be able to write this mixed number as an improper fraction, all right? And I'm going to use this example here to, to help us do that. I have 57 over... <clears throat> Five. Actually, I'm going the, imp the other way around. I'm going from improper fraction to a mixed number. All right. 57 divided by 5. I want to write that as a mixed number. Well, what we have to do is we have to figure out what's the whole number part going to be and what's the proper fraction part going to be. All right. And the way we do that is by division. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and divide 5 into 57. Okay. Well, 5 goes into 5 one time. And 1 times 5 is 5, so I write my 5 under here, and then I subtract, I get 0, then I bring down my next term. And then I want to see how many times this 5 goes into 7. Well, 5 goes into 7 one time, right, because 1 times 5 is 5. And then if I subtract, I'm going to get a remainder of 2. And remember, we call this your quotient from long division, and this is your divisor. All right, your quotient is your whole part, all right, of your mixed number, and your remind your remainder is your numerator, and your divisor is your denominator. All right, so fifty-seven over five is the same thing as eleven and two fifths. All right. And we found that using long division or division. All right. Now I want to go the other way around. I want to be able to change this mixed number to an improper fraction. All right. Well, what we're going to do here is we're going to use multiplication. All right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply this 8 and that 6. Right. I'm going to take my divisor, which is 6, and I'm going to multiply it by the 8. All right, so I'm going to have 6 times 8. And then I have to add my remainder to that, which is plus 1. And I'm going to keep my same denominator, right? So I'm going to do my divisor times my quotient. 
right? Plus my remainder, all right? And that comes from look, thinking about your long division. And so that'll be six times eight, which is 48 plus one, all over six. And 48 plus one is 49, so I get 49 over six, all right? And so that is how we change a mixed number to an improper fraction. And that concludes our study of fractions, our introduction to fractions.